Hi there everybody, Peter of England bringing you uh, a small video, short video, hopefully within about five minute duration, particularly addressed to those of you in the United States who in some instances seem to have difficulty in persuading the, the payee or the local banks to accept the checks. Often this has happened through uh, presentments to utility companies or credit unions uh, or for payment of property taxes, etc. So the things I'd like to address first of all are that don't be put off by the fact that they are refusing or saying that they can't present the cheque because there's no routing number on or there's, uh, there's no country stated on the cheques. Under international law, a cheque has an ability to be presented for clearing as long as a general uh, address is available and a communication corridor is made available for these people to contact us, which there very most certainly is. You have the fax number, you have the telephone number, and they also have the uh, We Are Bank clearing um, emails, which is clearing at wearebank.com or peter uh, at wearebank.com. And also for you out there who are wanting to register, there is registrations at wearebank.com. So, before we get on to what I'd suggest you start doing uh, to ameliorate this situation, I'd just like to show you that we are getting quite considerable numbers of checks in. This one here is from SunTrust in Orlando. This one here is from JP Morgan Chase. I think that one's in Houston. This one comes to us through Sparkasse in Germany. It's an American check. This one is from Key Bank National 17 Corporate Woods, Albany. That's a check for clearing in US dollars. Again, SunTrust from uh, Florida. Another one here coming through from Canada. That's in Canadian dollars, clearing through Barclays. This one here is through Citigroup, with the check duly attached and stamped eminently on the back. We have another one from RBC, that's in Canadian dollars. We have then several from Bank of America Merrill Lynch that come through on DHL courier packs. So these are just a few of the checks that are being presented to us and it begs the question uh, why banks like Wells Fargo are refusing to handle or process these checks when many of the others are. So for the benefit of the people in the United States who are uh, working uh, individually or as groups, what I would suggest is the following. You must start to come together as small workshop groups, educate yourself onto the basis of what these underlying instruments are, and find out, for example, by using um, Uniform Commercial Code as your reference. Uh, Unif Uniform Commercial Code Article 3 on negotiable instruments would give you an ability to see that a negotiable instrument has certain fiduciary responsibilities in the hands of the individual you handed it to. So once you put your name, signature and amount of money on a piece of paper, it energizes that piece of paper and turns it into something that it afore was not. So, don't be put off by them saying they can only take uh, United States checks or checks drawn on a U.S. bank. Under the uh, United Nations Convention on International uh, Promissory Notes uh, and Checks, you will find that there is an obligation for them to present. And part of that is what's called Uniform Rules of Collection, URC 522. So, for those of you who can get together in small groups, what I would recommend you to do is if you have no money available to you then why not contact the local university or the local college law department and ask them what is the situation regarding presenting a check drawn on a promissory note that you have already lodged or presented to a bank what is the obligation of the payee and the payee's bank to actually process that instrument also ask them to point out the defects on the instrument itself, because if there are no defects, then there is no reason not to present. And they do not, remember, they do not know whether the cheque will clear or not until it's presented. So this is why there is an obligation to present and why they should and must present. 
The next part would be then for those who want to take a more aggressive uh, uh, position on it and do have some money, maybe a couple of hundred dollars, collectively come together and find a reasonably, if one can still be found, neutral attorney or one that's at least benign to the proposition and ask him what is the procedure and the obligations on behalf of a bank in the United States once a foreign check is presented to it. As long as the check looks good on its face, then there is no reason on God's earth why it should not be presented. Now, this finally then leads us into conclusions about why the uh, industry or why the controlling mechanism of these banking cartels is refusing to present the checks and why the judges are no longer fit to sit on their seats. Because there is a societal implied contract between you, the citizen, and the state. And it runs something like this, that in return for you allowing them taxation rights over you, that the government, or the elected officials of that government, guarantee to provide for your security and safety and uphold what's called the rule of law to protect you from external enemies and those internally within a nation. That's the implied contract. That's a societally implied contract. The problem with this is once they abandon the rule of law and refuse to follow their own rules of law in black and white posted there internationally, locally, federally and regionally, what we are into then is a situation where the rule of law is no longer sustainable and so ask the question, if they are expecting you to follow the rules, the rules which they created for the transfer of these commercial instruments back and forth, yet at the same time they will not allow you fair rights to presentment, then the contractual obligation between you, the state, and whoever is representing the state, sitting there as the judge, is no longer valid. And if that is the case, then why should you be expected to fulfil and uphold your obligations as a so-called debtor when the other side, the counterparty, will not enforce the rule of law? And that applies to all commercial instruments. Equally, the final point to make here is that when it comes to so-called legal tender and the acceptance of a cheque, there is no way that they can turn around and say to you that a cheque is not a viable instrument for presentation as far as money is concerned. Without the cheque, without the promissory note, without the mortgage note, without the contract, there would be no commas on the planet at all. Because there is only 2% of cash available on the planet for paying all sorts of bills and exchanges. So it's a fundamental aspect, it's a fundamental issue, and so thank you very much. I hope this has been of interest to you. Peter of England, signing off.